Hello, in this short video here, I would like to try to answer this question here about the inrush current of some rectifying circuit to power some LED lights. This is some example and some question that I originally got in German and I also recorded a German video for this, but then some person asked me if it would be possible to also have an English translation. So here in this video, I will try my very best to also give an English translation. Okay, so the question is, um, is said about the inrush current and um, we have some AC voltage system to power this and the LED light should be quite powerful, 2.3 kilowatts of power and there's a smoothing capacitor of 460 microfarads. And then the question is, how does the inrush current behave if we switch on at the zero crossing the zero point, the, the minimum voltage, let's say, um, and if we switch on at the maximum voltage at the peak of the sinusoidal mains voltage. And the person asking this question already tried to simulate this with LT spice, but it did not really work out. And so the question is just if I can maybe help with this a bit. And um, luckily I already have something that I can rely on. So I've, I don't know, six months, uh, maybe half a year ago, given an English workshop for our IEEE student branch about electric circuit simulation with LT SPICE and the basic usage of this program. And uh, the example that I used as a motivation is um, already quite fitting for the problem here because you can see we have some AC voltage source, we have a rectifying circuit with four diodes, we have some ohmic load, and we have this smoothing capacitor. And um, I've already opened this up in LT Spice. And why was this used as a motivation for the workshop? Because such circuit shows the advantage and the power of such transient numeric circuit simulation um, to analyze behavior of such, such circuits, because otherwise uh, it would be quite cumbersome to, um, to check, for example, what happens how does the output voltage here behave? What happens to the output voltage if we change the value of this capacitor here? Okay, so we will use this circuit as a basis. I will cut the questions here and now we can somehow work through this from left to right and um, at first maybe adjust the voltage source here. This is currently set to just 50 volts. For our main grid voltage, we have a peak value or amplitude of square root of two times 230 volts for the RMS value of the voltage. And this is 325 volts of peak value, 50 Hertz of frequency. And I will set the phase at the beginning to zero degree and maybe show this information on the schematic to make it more understandable what happens here. And with the space button on the keyboard, you can always zoom to fit. Then we have these four diodes and we can check the diet model. Um, these diodes here can currently just carry 200 milliampers of current. If we have an RMS voltage here of 230 volts and remember we want to have a power of 2300 watts, we need to have um, an RMS value of 10 ampere for the current. So these diodes here are way too small. We need to have larger diodes. We need to pick another one. So I will order this list by the current. And uh, we can check here are some, uh, some diodes that can carry 10 amperes of current, for example, with 350 volts of breakdown voltage, which should be sufficient here for our source. So I will select this diet and just copy this type and paste it here. And here, and also for the last diet for this one here. Okay, so our diets are set. Um, then we can think about, okay, if we want to have at the output voltage here will be roughly uh, the, the, the peak voltage, a little less because we charge and discharge this capacitor here that is not variable, but has this fixed capacitance of 460 microfarads. Um, so if you 
if you take this power here and um, if we divide it by the voltage that we have uh, to get the current and then if we calculate the ratio between voltage and current to get this resistance here we end up with something like maybe 30 ohm um, that should give us at this voltage a power of 300 uh, 2300 watts okay and so um, now we can more or less start some simulation and check the simulation command here and this now simulates for 400 milliseconds uh, one period of time one one period for the main screen voltage is 20 milliseconds so this is already something like uh, five times four 20 periods of the main grid voltage um, but to analyze the inrush current we maybe just need one and a half or two so I will set this to 30 milliseconds and we want to start right at the beginning and um, yeah so we can simulate and maybe check the behavior here at this diet and we can see okay there is some kind of inrush current but if we check the output voltage um, the output voltage also already um, starts at some value so I'm not sure if the capacitor is really discharged at the beginning or if there's already some um, working or operating point calculated so I would just enable this option here skip initial operating point solution but nothing happened so um, looks like the capacitor was discharged before so maybe what we can now do is um, change this angle here and set it to something variable and now use this step command to say we want to change this phi um, let's say linearly from zero degree to 90 degree in steps of 30 degree and simulate oh okay and then we see what happens we get really 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 high inrush currents at the beginning in the range of some kilo amperes um, which of course doesn't make too much sense and this is because we have we have we still have an ideal source so our source should have some inner resistance some generator resistance some series resistance and I will set this to 1 ohm um, it's a question how reasonable this is of course this is at the end what will really limit the inrush current um, yeah so with this 1 ohm um, and the yeah so we we should now get less of the current but as you can see we even get more and this is because okay this series resistance now limits the inrush current but we we need to have something that limits the rise time of the inrush current um, th the main grid and the cables they do not just have resistance they also have inductance so we need to have some inductance um, and with control R you can rotate it and place it on the wire here and I will set this to maybe one micro farad, uh, Henry which yeah is somehow reasonable uh, for this main grid voltage and now we can see okay now we get nice values for our inrush currents and because we selected one ampere here uh, one ohm here and we have this 325 volts at the beginning the discharged capacitor acts like a short circuit we also get a maximum current of something like 325 um, uh, yeah 325 amperes a little less because there's of course also a voltage drop and um, some kind of series resistance inside the diodes that will more limit the current okay so um, if we now delete the output voltage now we can see okay how this and maybe limit 
um, the simulation time even more. We can already check how, what, is, what is the influence of um, the phase shift of the source voltage of the main grid voltage onto this inrush current. If we switch it switch on at zero, there's less inrush current and it takes longer time to charge the capacitor. And if we switch at the maximum value, of course, there will be a high peak of this inrush current at the beginning, and then it takes less time for this for the capacitor to be charged. Um, still, one problem in the simulation is that if we now go back to some setting that we had before, so maybe simulate five periods of the main grid voltage and just save the last one. So start to save data after four periods. And so now we check the current, we just see the phase shift. If we check the output voltage, we see, okay, we get the same behavior just with the phase shift. And so if we take a look at the current here at the output, now I maybe, maybe need to delete the current through the diodes, then we can see, um, voltage and current here look fairly similar because it's some ohmic resistor. They, they should have the same behavior. So if I delete the current and if I take the voltage and multiply it with the current through the resistor, IR1, now we get power. Voltage times current is power and we also get power displayed here on this axis. And the problem or the, the good thing is now we would be able usually if you press the control button on the keyboard, click on this, this waveforms would be integrated, but they cannot be integrated if there's a stepped command. So we need to disable the step command using some semicolon to comment this out and set the phase shift to some fixed value, for example, zero, simulate again. And now we get power. So now with the control button on the keyboard and the mouse click, we can integrate and we can see, okay, we get a little too less power, just 2.2 kilowatts, not 2.3. So we need to adjust the resistance here a little bit, make this smaller, for example, 28. We simulate. Okay, so now we get a little too much of power, so we need to have a little larger resistor. So maybe 28.2, simulate again. And okay, there we now get some quite nice uh, result. So maybe um, even a bit more because it was still too much power. And so now we get something that is very close to the 2.3 kilowatts that we would like to have. Um, on average for the output power. So this way um, or this method helps us in selecting a proper resistance value here. Still, of course, a real diet or lots of power diets at, at this position here that will create this output power of 2.3 kilowatts will behave slightly different than this ohmic load here. Um, because of their nonlinear behavior, but on average, I think this works quite well. Th the purpose of this simulation model or of this circuit here is to simulate the inrush current. And this works quite well for this capacitor. So I go back to the step command, insert back this variable value of phi here once again, and also change the simulation command to just simulate the first 10 milliseconds, for example. And now we can see, okay, we get different powers at the output. This is not what we are interested in. We want to see the inrush current. And this is the solution and the answer to the question that was um, here raised in this email. Um, and I hope this explains it pretty well.